Now, this has inspired a generation of children to become engineers. And I know this made me fascinated in mechanics and making things. The yo-yo, one of the oldest toys known to mankind. And the earliest examples date back to the ancient Greeks 3,000 years ago, and they were made out of stone. In the 1940s, students in America thought they found a more interesting use for a pie dish. And the pie dish was made by a man called... Look out! Look out! Oh, <laughs> you having me doing these things. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll get you next time. <laughs> and the pie dish was made by a man called... <laughs> <laughs> And the pie dish was made by a man called... William Frisbee. <laughs> ah! Attack of the Slinkies. Invented in 1943 by Richard James in America, when he accidentally knocked some springs off the shelf, he'd been trying to design some special springs to hold ship's instruments steady at sea. Now, they might look like daft playthings, but they actually did find a serious use. In the late 1960s, American servicemen in Vietnam took a slinky and pulled it out to 20 metres to create a radio antenna. They reckoned that this would improve the signal on their military communications equipment. To test it, Radio Slinky went on air. GB2 CPM, Golf Bravo 2, Charlie Papa Mike is calling CQ, CQ, CQ. But would anyone respond? Golf Bravo 2, Charlie, Papa, Mike, do you copy? Thank you for the 5-9, and your 5-9 also here in the south of England. The name here is Tony, Tango, Oscar, November, Yankee, Tony, uh, Kersel? Yeah, Roger Candy, what is your location? Las Palmas. Gran Canaria. And how was that reception? Very good. And we were getting a good signal here. We measure it in numbers, and I would say we were getting a five and nine signal. So uh, the aerial works well. Ah, the wonder of radio. Radio has been a source of entertainment for nearly 100 years. It's all out there, just waiting to be picked up. Round I see. Mr. Little Round Copper. What? 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 It's all around us. It's in the air. Your favourite TV programmes, your favourite radio programmes, they're all out there, but we can't see them. Even me, I'm out there. It's all passing right through us. I can't see it, but with this ordinary domestic fluorescent tube, I will show you the magic. Look, no wires, no attachments, but right here, I've got a model of a transmitter. I can't feel the force, but I can see it. The power from this model transmitter energises this fluorescent tube. But the real magic of radio is being able to pick up that microscopic signal and actually find exactly the programme you want. <laughs> Wireless sets were available from the mid-1920s and it was only ten years later that televisions were on sale to the public and they cost £30, that's six times the average weekly wage at that time. <laughs> they were very boxy things, with a tiny screen at the front and a big long cabinet like that, and that was to accommodate a cathode ray tube, which had an electron gun at the back, which fired rays to the front and sensitised the screen at the front. Now, there were lots of novel ways to try and increase the size of that little picture, and I'd like Bill and Ben to be increased. I used to love this. And what one of them was this. A big lens. It enlarged the picture, 
but also the defects. But the nice paraffin pink hue to it, and it was filled with paraffin, gave the screen a nice rosy glow. But it took a big leap of technology before we could have really big pictures in the home. Wow! Bill and Ben hadn't seen it. And that's this, a state-of-the-art flat-screen plasma telly. And look at that, no lump behind. It's only a few centimetres thick, because the flat screen is almost a million pixels, each one like a little neon tube emitting light. And they're remade for the 21st century, a bit like me, are my old chums Bill and Ben, in widescreen glowing colour. And I still can't understand what they're on about. OK, this is more the thing today's kids are into. Oh! Televisions aren't just for watching your favourite TV programmes anymore. They're complete entertainment centres. And I know children that spend more time on video games than they actually spend in bed. Those graphics draw you right in there. It's almost more exciting than real life. Oof, well, almost. Oh! When you've had enough of your video games, this one box will play music CDs or you can pop in a DVD. And sit back and watch a feature film in your own home. So, oh, my nightmares come true. DVD's high-quality picture and surround sound make it a big rival to going out to the cinema. In 2002, we bought 90 million DVDs. Oh, he is good, isn't he? What with all the special effects, it's like having the star right here in your own living room. Whoa! He got you, then. Fred so. In the end, we now live in an electronic cacophony that tempts us to stay in for our fun. Day by day, night by night, street upon street and house upon house, people have created their own multimedia leisure centres. The sounds of thousands of different entertainments emanate from living rooms right across the city. It's only a hundred years since Nippers phonograph. And now the modern technology that gives us CDs and TVs and DVDs is getting more affordable and ever more sophisticated. But one thing we still have to go out to enjoy is a live concert. But who knows, one day the press of a remote control may bring that into our homes. Hey! Great! Hey, this should get the neighbours. Good night. Oh.